Hello. It is Thursday, April 25th. About 5.45 in the morning. <laughs> I can't sleep. So, I just had a panic attack for no reason. Well, not for no reason. Um, my anxiety has been kind of creeping up because um, in about nine days, I'm going to be flying to New Jersey to stay for a month and I'm actually looking forward to it but I get very easily overwhelmed um, I haven't packed and my brain kind of shuts down like instead of saying oh I have to pack let me start packing I'm like I gotta pack I gotta pack and I end up not doing it because I'm so overwhelmed um, my hair looks insane because I <sighs> always I twist my hair before I install braids it just works out better for me and I sorely miscalculated my timing so um, because I usually plan it out that it will take me a week to braid my hair because I don't I don't try to do it like all straight through I do it like a couple hours a day it works out for me but I might end up having to finish it when I like start it start it where it's like I can why am I telling you guys this well basically do the back do the front and enough that I can ponytail it and then whatever I don't finish I'll just finish in New Jersey I had a migraine that started towards the end of February I still have a migraine and it's April. The pain's been broken up a bit. Um, I was sent to the VA hospital um, to get an MRI and I was like, you know what? May as well go to the emergency room because that's what they told me to do. But the thing is, when someone at the VA tells you to go to the emergency room for a migraine, they actually mean the VA emergency room. If you go to your, if you go to a outside emergency room, the VA is not going to pay for it because they're not going to pay for an emergency visit for a migraine. But since I was actually there, I said, I'm going to go to the emergency room. They gave, they put me on an IV. Um, it was a very interesting concoction. I was actually surprised because it was like, this potent mix of like diphyhydramine, which is Benadryl and a bunch of other stuff. They tried to explain it to me, but there's something about Benadryl when mixed with other medications actually can fix migraines sometimes. And it did work. And I haven't had really bad migraine pain since then, but I still have the migraine. Like it's the pressure is still there, but, um, before the emergency visit, it was that there's um the temporal artery, artery, which is literally at your temple that pulses. That was just like banging. I mean, it was awful. But um, I've been better. Um, my practitioner, because my doctor retired, um, primary manager, he, oh my God, gave me oxycodone because for my flight because last year um I have never had any jet lag before in my life last year man though I when I flew to New Jersey I think I was in some sort of almost coma for three days my body just was wrecked um so she gave me oxycodone and I'm like I don't want to take oxycodone I've never taken it before the most the strongest before the oxycodone there's only two things I have taken um, that like, it's, I, there's only two be careful medications I've taken. I've taken Vicodin before because I've had surgeries and I've taken, um, this medication that has a barbiturate caffeine and aspirin, which it's a low dose, but people have overdosed on barbiturates before, but I know I'm rambling, but it's cause of my anxiety. Um, and I'm like, I don't, I, I you know, just the thought of like, going being in the airport like high as a kite kind of freaks me out but if my flight is anything like last year 
I'm going to need it. I don't even think I talked about that, did I? Did I talk about that? It was awful. I flew from... Okay, so I flew from... Basically, my flight went from Reno Airport to the Phoenix Airport, and then Phoenix all the way to um, to Newark. I'm from Irvington, New Jersey, originally. And I was stuck in Phoenix for 10 hours, I think. About 10 hours. Because... I get to the Reno airport, no one, you know, I check in, no one says anything to us. We're sitting around and I remember we're looking at each other because we're, you know, you're, you know what time you're supposed to board and we're like, okay, they're not, they're, no one's communicating with us and we're just sitting around like, aren't we supposed to be boarding by now? Out of, and they wait until the time that we should have departed to be like, yeah, well, yeah, we're doing some maintenance. And we're just like, they're just now doing maintenance. Yeah, they were doing maintenance on the plane. So, and a lot of us had connecting flights. And at the last minute, they're like, okay, we're boarding. So now, so they basically told us that we had to make a decision whether or not we were going to get on the plane. If, because if you have a connecting flight, you're clearly going to, you're, you're going to miss the stupid flight. So you, you had to decide whether we were going to get on the flight and try to figure things out when we get there, or if we're not going to get on the flight, flight can, or, and try to, you know, cancel it, you know, if you could, I could not afford to do that or whatever. And I'm standing here like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. I don't know what decision to make. And I literally, I think I was the last person to get on the plane because I, you know, we're in line and, you know, I had asked, um, one of the crew members, a, a man that was getting everybody on the flight. I said, how, I think I asked him like, when are you going to finish boarding? Basically how much time I asked. And he's like, but right now. So I, I asked him, I, I had asked the attendants, what do I do? They said, go get on the plane. You'll be okay. Um, I get there, I, of course, you know, I felt, uh, it was awful. Uh, the, the majority of the people had a connecting flight. One w- poor girl was crying because she, it was an emergency. Her, I think her father was dying and now her, you know, missing the flight. We, I get to Phoenix <laughs> and, um, I'm sorry I'm rambling, but uh, I get to Phoenix and, um, I'm, I, you know, it's obviously not my fault that I missed my flight and they were going to send me to LaGuardia. And here's the thing. I, I, I think that if you're not from an area in a country, you, you don't realize that you can't just slap somebody somewhere. You can't just say, oh, you were supposed to go to, to Newark, New Jersey. Oh, well, we'll just put you in New York. How's New York? It's like, I, I, I no. I have never been in LaGuardia in my life, and no, <laughs> you know, it's not the same thing, um, but they found, like, it was, it was hard because it was a weird day of the week, and they didn't have a bunch of flights, but they found a flight to Newark on a, in a, on another airline, um, which they transferred, and I didn't have to pay anything because it wasn't my fault, and, um, so mind you, I'm in Phoenix. So they were like, yeah, go, you know, go to this airline. I, I, uh, United. So United was like on the other side of the airport. Let me tell you something. Now I know that I can't live in Phoenix because I, at one point going from one air, one side to the other, at one point I had to go outside. Basically I had to follow these dotted lines and then I, I was only outside in the Phoenix air for all of two minutes. That was the longest two minutes of my life. What it felt like to me. And when, when was this? This was May of last year. It felt like if you've ever had to check something in the oven, like you're checking a cake or you're baking chicken and you stick your head in and then after a few seconds, it's like, okay, my face is baking. That is what Phoenix air felt like. I was... It was so bad. It was so awful. And as in what was funny was, um, 
So this flight was supposed to go straight from Phoenix to Newark. And there were a bunch of kids that were from Tucson. Tucson. Is that how you say it? Tucson, Arizona. And I kind of asked them. I, I just assumed that if you're from the area, you're used to it. And they were like, no, it sucks. We're hot. So I felt better. Anyway, but the flight was basically 10 hours after I had arrived in Phoenix. So I don't even remember how I spent those 10 hours. But it sucked. <laughs> no one wants to be stuck in an airport. But it was my only choice. Because it was the only flight left. And on the way back, still had problems. I think, let's see. I got. I went from Newark to San Diego. And San Diego Airport, that is my jam. That was, I think, that was an awesome airport. I, I like that airport. Man, that was great. <laughs> And I'm glad it was great because I got stuck there too because the flight, okay, I was supposed to fly from San Diego to Reno and what happened was um, the plane, while it was arriving to San Diego, um, got hit with some messed up wind stuff. So, so it was funny because I'm getting these text messages and it's like, your flight has been delayed. Five minutes later, your flight's been delayed to this. And I'm like... <laughs> so, yeah, it took forever. It, I was stuck there for about four or five hours. And um, I've never had flight delays before. So for those of you who have a lot of them, I feel you. I've never had a flight delay before in my entire history of flying until last year. And... Yeah, when I got to New Jersey, I think the first three days I was there, I was just knocked out and unconscious and cuddling with my mom's pit bull mix sparkle. Pit, I think she's pit bull and French bulldog. Adorable. But I was, uh, and that's why I'm thinking, um, I don't think I want to take oxycodone, but that was exactly what they gave it to me for because this has been the worst migraine I've ever had. Um, in the 10 years that I've been having migraines. Um, so she just, here, take this. Um, and of course they called me to make sure that I don't take that with my furacid, which is the barbiturate. And I'm like, I know that, but someone's obviously done it before. <sighs> I'm sorry. I, I keep apologizing for rambling, but it's like, I feel like I need to talk. I can't sleep. My anxiety is through the roof because anytime there's like a major change, even if it's a positive change, I'm like, ah. so, oh my gosh. And I'm like, I'm afraid to start packing because last year, um, when I started packing, my dog went insane. Zelda who's over there. She went crazy and I don't. It's weird because she, it's not like, I don't think I ever just randomly pull out a suitcase. So I don't know how she, I don't think she knew I was leaving specifically, but she knew something was different or maybe she felt my anxiety. I don't know, but she lost her mind for like two, like basically 10 days before I left. She kept sitting on me. It was weird. She was just being weird, but so yeah, we have the migraine. It's yeah, it's still right there. And um what is frustrating about the situation is um I might have made a decision in birth control that might have just 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 destroyed my life. Um I got a couple days after the migraine started, which was sometime in February. I um had Nexplanon implanted in my arm. It's like a rod like this and it gets put in your arm. I had to go to the actual VA center to get that put in. And now the doctors are worried that it that this is the reason why I have such a severe and such a prolonged migraine, considering I've never had a migraine like this that's lasted months. And I'm just like, well, that sucks. 
I asked though, that was the first thing I asked was, do you think this would have any problems with migraines? Oh, well, no studies have shown that me, you know, the, my OBJ, OBJ, GYN said that. Meanwhile, the practitioner was like, well, yeah, studies don't show it, but no, it's common. I'm like, well, I'm trying here, people. I, there's really, I don't have a lot of options because the optimal birth control for me would actually be just plain old oral contraception, the birth control pill. I'm not allowed to take the birth control pill because I'm a, th I'm over the age of 35 and have migraines. Taking the actual pill puts me at a four, gives me, put, it, it, it's a four times, how do I, see, I can't even talk. That's what happens when you have a migraine too. It, your whole, your whole speech gets messed up. You're four times more likely to have a stroke. Um, when you're past the age of 35 and have migraines. If you are younger, like in your 20s, and you have migraines, then it depends on your symptoms. They will decide whether there's a risk or not. But yeah, not allowed to take that, which would be it, but it would be optimal because it's the best, that's like the best birth control for PCOS. Um, because it's just better at, you know, dealing with the extra male hormones that women with PCOS have. Um, the Debo shot causes me to gain weight, which is why I don't like it, but also it doesn't, it just doesn't address the same issues. They tried to counteract it. It's just, <clears throat> so they're like, try an explanation. And I'm like, sure. And what I'm hoping though, is that, <sighs> Mainly because it's already started to heal. The muscles are have started to heal around it. It's like, do I really want to yank it out now? What I'm hoping is that the surge, you know, your body has to, the female body has to get used to this stuff. And what I'm hoping is that maybe in a couple months, things will even out. And maybe I won't have the problems with the migraine, you know. But I had actually gotten a call, I think, two days ago from... A VA nurse saying, have you, she was asking, have you made an appointment with uh, Women's Health to talk about getting the next one I'll remove? And I'm like, no, I'm about to leave. <laughs> like, I am not worried about that right now. And I do not want to drive back to Reno with a freaking active migraine. The other, oh, there was all sorts of stuff going on. That's what happens when I don't update. The other thing that happened is that, um, I have a new psychiatrist because the dragon lady finally retired. I was stuck with her for, I was stuck with that woman for eight years and I don't even want to get into, oh God, I'm about to cry. Just thinking about, I'm about to cry. That's how much I, she just, she was just awful. She was just, she, mm. it is a, it is a horrible feeling when a doctor doesn't trust doesn't trust your observation in yourself. It's horrible. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> have a new chick um, who immediately was just like, went through my entire history, my entire, all my medical data th from 2009 to now. And basically just said what I've been trying to say, which is, huh, You've been on the same antidepressant for all these years. Is it possible that it's not the right antidepressant for you? Which is what I've been trying to say, you know, because a lot of times with if you, if you don't have no experience or don't know really anything about, you know, psychiatrists and antidepressants is, you know, if you've never been on an antidepressant before, they'll be like, hey, we'll try this. They'll put you on a tiny little dose and then they'll put you on your therapeutic dose. The, you know, and sometimes it can take a person and it, it's not everybody, you know, gets the, oh, we got it right in the first try. You know, sometimes it's like, okay, we'll try this or we'll try this. Oh, the thing is when you have a doctor that is biased and believes that this is what's wrong with the patient, they're not going to treat you for what you believe you have 
So even though I've been on this one antidepressant and never really saw any benefit from it, and I expressed wanting to perhaps experiment, she absolutely refused because she did not believe that I actually, she's, she was one of the people who upheld the personality disorder diagnosis. <laughs> It's really, really hard because it's like, it, it's so embarrassing at this point. It's really embarrassing. It's like, government, please just stop with the BS. We caught you. Okay. We caught you. You decided that you were broke. You decided that you're immature and can't handle a bunch of women being in the military. So you decided that when everybody, so when everyone, everyone cries rape, you want to say that they cried rape and you just want to decide they have a personality disorder. So when I get someone that looks at that and becomes biased, instead of looking at my symptoms they sit there and try to put my symptoms into this disorder that doesn't even fit. So finally the psychiatrist, this new psychiatrist, maybe, she, I don't know what she saw, but she saw something that said, well, I'm not going to be an asshole. She saw something and she said, well, you've been on this same and you've never tried any other antidepressant. That's interesting. That is surprising. Huh? Usually we they and um, so she put me on Wellbutrin. I'm still on Venlafaxine, um, affects her. She put me on Wellbutrin, and she said we'll go from there. Um, and it was working. It was working until I couldn't see anymore. <laughs> I could not see, and the thing is. Because I already have, obviously, I wear glasses and I already know I need my, I have my eyes checked. I guess I didn't notice it as much during the day, but one day I go to Walmart before the sun went down, came out after the sun went down, got in the car, closed the door, <laughs> turn on the ignition, look through the windshield, realize I can't see. And when I say I can't see, it's not like, huh, my night vision's kind of effed this today. It's like, who smeared Vaseline on my glasses? That's what I mean by I couldn't see. Like, staggeringly, this is not normal. I could not see. I literally, all I saw, all I could make out was colors from the traffic lights. And Derek doesn't have a license. And somehow we're still alive. And um, it was determined that Wellbutrin caused it. I was told to stop taking it. The prescription in the system is on hold because we have to make a decision whether I'm going to just take the lower dose as a supplement or just, you know, because the low, it wasn't, it, I didn't have the problem until I went to the, thera you know, the more therapeutic dose. I'm still happy that somebody tried. I didn't even talk. I didn't even say anything because I was, I was, I let it go. I wasn't going to be like, well, let's just, I want to try something different. It's been 10 years. She came up with that on her own because that's what a doctor is supposed to do. I'm not bitter or anything, but yeah, I did the twist. I'm not finished twisting it. It's just easier to put the braids on top of the twist. It just works better for me, but I'm really pushing it with the time. Um, all my medications are set. So since I'm staying for a month, I, I have all my medications, I think. Yes. Thank you. 
90 day supply of everything because I mean technically it's not a big deal because I found out well a there's a VA close to where my mom lives B you can set up a temporary address in the situation like this where you have to go somewhere in emergency you're going vacation I know I'm rambling but I'm just like I can't sleep I can't sleep I can't sleep I can't sleep I'm excited but the thing is like I said even if it's a positive stress or a positive excitement, it can be overwhelming for me and it can trigger anxiety. And I had a panic attack. And I don't think the panic attack was had anything to do with travel. I think it was just time for a panic attack. That's I have PTSD. See PTSD. <sighs> I'm not okay. I'm like so I'm like vibrating. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not right. <laughs> Excuse me. I do vape. I have a very, I take in a very low amount of nicotine. Honestly, I probably, because this is actually Derek's, I don't even really use it. So I probably, that probably, the amount that I actually use it probably would come up to about six cigarettes a day. And sometimes not even that. I mainly do it because I don't know what else to do. It's a fidget thing. That's a horrible way to fidget. But it's so easy. I'm not going to get up and light. I don't even have any cigarettes. Um, I'm not going to get up and say, well, I need to fidget. Let me go outside and light a cigarette. No, this is right here. <laughs> like, oh, time to fidget. Let's vape. That's literally what it is. It's a, it's a fill in the void. Isn't that horrible? I mean, I guess there are worse things to try to fill a void of with. Anybody got an answer to that one? I could be shoving food down my face. I am excited to go to New Jersey, and I wasn't going to say anything. <sighs> because it's like, I'm the kind of person that I don't like to to announce things until it's in my hand but i did book my ticket to book con nyc nyc i did i may i i sent it to my mother's house though because i will be the person that forgets to pack it but i am going i am scared to death because first of all i am not a good um, transplant into New York. I, every time I go to New York, I don't even think I've gone by myself. Now that I think about it, I've always gone like on a trip, like a group trip or with friends. I don't think I've ever been to New York by myself. I, I mean, I have no problem getting there. Thanks mass transit. Awesome stuff. That's the easy part. It's just, you know, getting there is not the problem. Take the bus, take a train, not a problem. Being in New York, in New York City, and getting to the convention center and not looking like a tourist <laughs> is going to be a problem. And then going into the convention center and being surrounded by a bunch of people, that's going to be a problem. I actually got sick in a Dairy Queen, and that was very embarrassing. There is a limit to how many people I can be around. I can be around people, but, it, you know, there's a limit. It was awful. We went to, I was like, I want ice cream. I want a blizzard. We went in, and then all of a sudden, scores of, of teenagers came in. I didn't realize that on Thursdays, they have an early lunch. And I, it, I was just like, uh, 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 and I just got sick. I started crying. It's so embarrassing. That hasn't happened in, like, two years that I had that kind of reaction. And the woman one of the workers felt so sorry for me and she like I couldn't even put a lid on my soda I was shaking so I was shaking and she was like I'm so sorry it's okay just so you know they have an early lunch on Thursdays and we have to hide the the lids to the to the cups because we they steal them really really kids really wow you steal the lids very mature 
but um it was just because the dairy i mean it's a dairy queen it's not big and it's not like a dairy because it's not one of those dairy queens that are attached to things it's small so that's all you know so like if it was in a walmart it wouldn't have been a lot of people but it was like uh, i never used to have i i and, and just so you understand i didn't have problems like this post-trauma i mean pre-trauma i really didn't like i i used to go to the mall all the time as a teenager as an adult it's nothing but it's my new normal but i was so embarrassed oh my gosh I shouldn't be embarrassed. There's nothing to be embarrassed about, but I guess I just felt like a, I felt like I failed. I failed a, pe a people test, basically. But, um, I, I want to go. I really want to go. And I feel like I want to go because these are my people, you know, when you, I, I don't think, I don't, I've never been to this, I've never been to a con. I've never been to any kind of con. And I'm like, these are my people. I need to go and there's going to be YouTubers there. I don't know. The problem was I was try I had to pick between Sunday and Saturday because I couldn't afford to go to both days. And I, like all the people, authors and booktubers, all of them were like to be announced. And I'm like, MFers, they told, it says on the site, you have to order the tickets by this date in April or you may not get a ticket you might have to pay for the tickets there and then it'll be more. But then we don't, but if you have to pick one day, we don't know when these wonderful people are going to be there. So, but I, it looked like Saturday was like the more better day. more packed. So I was like, I'm going to go. And, um, there are writer writing workshops. I should be talking about this on my book too, but I'm, I just, I, I didn't want to announce it because like, what if I chickened out or something, but I'm going to go. Um, I thought I was going to list one of my Jersey friends to go with me and he said he would go, but I am not a fan of his behavior the lot uh, from the last time I went and maybe I'll talk about that, but that's like really personal. So I don't know if I should hang out with him. Oh my gosh, 32 minutes. I think you, I think this is enough. I think this is enough. I just, I wish, I just realized how much I haven't talked about. Oh, and I gotta, I gotta take some migraine meds. I've been getting, a, I, I, I usually don't get really nauseous, but this is, since this is super migraine, what's another word? I was thinking about, I don't watch Dragon Ball Z, but I was thinking about, was it Super Saiyan? Super Saiyan migraine? Yeah. So yeah, I have an awful migraine. I have a super, I have, you, you should, let's look at, let's look at the cat. Let's look at the cabinet. Let's, let's, let's look at this awful cabinet I have now of migraine medications. Like, look, like this, okay. That's a migraine, med that's diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl. And then it's like, let's see, let's sleeping pills. This is my gamapentin and which I take regularly for migraines. But then we have, what the heck is this? 